Hundreds of young people in 1976 lost their lives fighting for a better education in South Africa. 43 years later and the education system is still unequal and perhaps poses the question, is this the education they fought for? Other children are able to go to computer labs and get much more research, but us, we don't have a library. The call to the student protests of 2015-2016 was nation building. Our generation reminded society that you cannot build a nation whilst others are left behind academically and economically. Education is one of the most important weapons in a country. With little government assistance, Ekwekweni High in the Eastern Cape reminds us of the cost of free education. Indeed, free, but not equal. It is an early school morning in the Eastern Cape. And like many students, 13-year-old Banele is headed to school. The Department of Education says that out of 100 learners that start school, only 12 are likely to make it to tertiary, making you wonder if he'll be one of them. With numbers like that, where does the Eastern Cape fall, which has a reputation for performing the worst in matric results? 25 years after democracy, and there are still schools in rural areas that are underfunded, lacking basic resources, and Ekwekweni High is one of them. According to departmental prescripts, the school is deemed as quintal one. What does that mean? It means that these are low income families. Eh? So the, it's a poverty, relatively poverty stricken area. Past struggle, they rely mostly on grants and you name all those things. So, precisely to talk to those things. It's a, it, this is an old school, as you can see, that it was built by parents in 1983. 
I think that's where the school started. Skale Papizul Ethnic. Kukiwesa school. Betwi Malinga Bazan. That was their dream, their vision. Then now up to an extent that they engaged. I think it was Anglo American who put a structure, a this structure. Education is dealt with in section 29 of our constitution. It sets out that everyone has the right to a basic education and that's really what a lot of case law um, has dealt with in is trying to tease out what exactly is a basic education in South Africa um, and what does the constitution, what does it actually mean um, that you must be provided with a basic education. It includes things like every child must have a textbook. Uh, it means that you have to have a desk and a chair. Uh, you have the right to be transported to school um, so that you can access a school. Sister, we see Lalez means to get up. And I'm wondering how busy I'm come. The geography speaks to a wider basin that we serve. So I'm going to my I was thinking even yesterday, you know, and Bala. So I go go in Tabi. This is called the Central Sub Basin. The service is is called. Yeah, man. This junior second, they feed in, into us. So therefore, the Chalagen go go have a cinema and a cool. Tell again, I don't know why 581. How do they come here? How do they, they, they get to school? They travel, most of them, they travel. They travel. Kilometers, ridiculous kilometers to and fro. We are going to go to the house. We are going to go to the house. We are going to go to the house. We are going to go to the If a child has to travel 20 km, 22 kilometers to and fro, Therefore, that's a challenge on its own. And you must also factor in into a crime up because Bala Lela Pizin Lelen and so forth. Munanu figures call in it in Iwe, Gentlesha Gianeta, Queer Banda, Zogas and Dogas in Pakra Native. We don't get our rhythm as a school because it's this yo yo effect, back on our back. And you must consider, you must consider those things. Some parents, of course, who can afford Bakashi Moto for one and above. Na ko ano fumaswa nez moto asko road worth. Yeah, because bona mo sumoto zala pela lin. Be you concerned? Na le, it's a dicey situation. The school tries to solve the issue of transport by using a nearby hostel as accommodation for matric students. We do a hostel up here schooling. Because we call Kof Kof Anis Nabopa, that old building, we converted that into a makeshift hostel to accommodate these grade 12s. But then again, if you were to go there to, for inspection, you would see that, no, it is not habitable. We are still in court regarding scholar transport, trying to force the department to um, create a database of all the learners that require transport, all of those that have applied, and to clarify the system that has to be used. We do have some few classrooms here, but ideally would want a school that is also 
having in those foreign science labs, eh? mm. your libraries, eh? things that are taken for granted elsewhere. Eh? As now as well, those basic things, you know, we can't access the libraries. We tell you a fourth industrial revolution go. <coughs> So we are left behind <laughs> in terms of all those things. So the issue of infrastructure really is very concerning. It's very concerning because we are staring into our own tablets, access information, we've got internet connections and all of those things combined. Minus them, we are affected negative. In 2005, the government came with just five, five classes. So this school needs to be developed. There is no a proper structure that this is the way it's supposed to be. And then in some classes, you found out there are more learners in that, in that classroom. There is grade nine there. There were 115 in one class, and then only one learner passed in March. Most classes are congested. Go to share about tuition. I know no one needs a class in. Who to elevate that class? Of course, it impacts negatively because you 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 want to talk to individual teaching. Uh, focused teaching, so it's difficult because some of them they hide behind others. It's even difficult to detect into the absenteeism and so forth and so on. Mm. We represented equal education in trying in getting the minister to implement norms and standards for school infrastructure. Those were passed in 2013. Um, and those set out timelines for various things, including overcrowding in classrooms. And I believe that the, uh, the date for implementation of that is 2020. So by next year, the, any classroom that finds itself with more than 40 students in a high school, 35 in a primary school, um, more than anything more than that would be a breach of the regulations. In November 2013, it was given, they gave themselves three years in which to eradicate pit toilets. So from November 2016, any pit toilet in the country is actually an illegal toilet. After a fatal incident in 2018, where five-year-old Viwe Jali drowned in a pit toilet, President Cyril Ramaphosa instructed Minister of Basic Education, Angie Mutsecha, to conduct a full audit of school facilities without safe structures. This happened after the 2016 deadline for the removal of pit toilets in the norms and standards had passed. The government stakeholder relations, well, it's a topsy-turvy relation. Eh? Promises, promises, promises. But having said that, only yesterday, our application has, has, has been approved. I think by this afternoon today, this of was Although singers who are portion considerations about age and so forth and so on. So So slowly but surely, <laughs> but the problem remains. <laughs> So I said, let's come together, let's check what can we do to make this school a better school, you see. As a result, some teachers, we have decided to, to do some sacrifices, you see. I'm sitting with the principal in the office with two admin clerks 
So it means there is no privacy. So that is sacrifice. Someone can say that I cannot sit with, they can see where they are going to, to stay. <laughs> In 2016-2017, the department underspent its infrastructure budget by half a billion rand. So you can't always use the excuse that we don't have enough money, because often there is enough money, it's just not being spent in the correct way. If education is dividing us, what hope do we have for the future? The same year the department underspent its budget by half a billion rand is the same year they failed to meet the deadline for pit toilets in their own norms and standards. As a school going forward, we want to embrace this revolution. Eh? We want to see change in terms of how we do things. Singenegle, Kule Fourth Industrial Revolution. You know, when you listen or you read about how they do things in Gauteng, in the Western Cape, then you begin to wonder Uba's Pilawe P in Anziga, in South Africa team, as the Eastern Cape. Because there is this divide in terms of how they do things. Departmental, yeah? Department of Education is a new thing, different thing. So now for us we would like to be on that level. With 2020 less than five months away. We can only wonder if all schools will have electronic connectivity as promised. James Baldwin said that as one begins to become conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. Think about your education and ask yourself, if it is free, is it equal?